east and all the way west as far as St. Louis and then have one in Canada. You, you'll see some of them out here, they'll say um, uh, Chicago White Bronze Company or um, Detroit White Bronze Company, but they're really part of the American White Bronze Company. <laughs> Are they expensive? Were they expensive? Uh, yeah, because they were custom made for a particular mm -hmm. customer. There's bolts on them, so you'd order, you'd have to take off one side mm. as, as a family member would I send it in to be oh. embossed. Oh. Now, now I notice those bolts. Now the big stone behind you, uh, the Birdsell family. John Comley Birdsell, which is buried over on the far right, or sorry, far left over there. Mr. Comley, uh, John Comley Birdsell, uh, came here from New York, um, patented an idea for a machine that was called a clover hauler, uh, which you would know, some of you may know, is a threshing machine. That's what it looked like. It was to take clover when it budded, put it in one end of the machine, run it off a stationary engine, it rattled and shook and dust and everything else. One tube had all the waste, the chaff. The other side had all of the clover seed that you could replant to make more clover hay for your animals. So, Mr. Birdsell first started out in the West Race. He had a huge factory um, a little bit south and east of town, kind of along Lincoln Way East uh, a little ways before you get out of downtown South Bend. Um, his son took over the company. His son is buried out at Riverview Cemetery. His name is Joseph Benjamin Birdsell. Uh, today, Birdsell's machine, um, getting clover seed, if you even get that anymore, uh, you would use a combine, which combines the picking and the threshing in one machine. That's why they call it that. All right. Revolutionary War soldier veterans buried here. This is one. Isaac Ross was a veteran of the American Revolution. Um, so he's buried here. The DAR takes care of his stone. Lemoyne. 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 Stone, we just about have almost everybody. Good. <laughs> Haven't lost anybody. Nobody's fallen in. All right. Now we're looking at this stone here on the side, uh, on the north side, is the marker for Elisha Egbert. And then this is his son on this side, Edward Egbert. Um, Elisha was born in New Jersey, 1806. He grew up in Ohio and he studied law under a young rising lawyer in Ohio. Um, Mr. Egbert moved to, Elisha moved to South Bend in 1839. He was about 23 years old or so and began teaching school. 
and he taught some of what would later become kind of movers and shakers of South Bend, like Judge Stanfield. Judge Stanfield's grave, his stone is that big black gray stone right there. Um, while teaching, Elisha Egbert was appointed probate judge and became one of the first members of the Bar Association of Northern Indiana. Uh, he remained honorable, they always called him Honorable Judge Egbert until his death on November 19th, 1870. His son, Edward, also became a judge and eventually became the city's attorney, um, but died young at the age of 26. Died very young. So, all right. Now, if some of you showed up last month at Highland, sorry about that. I had a evidently a allergy to um, amoxicillin that I did not know about. So I uh, had to spend a couple days in the hospital. So that's why I was not at Highland. And it's kind of hard to uh, text all of you. So I apologize. We'll do Highland next summer. All right? We'll do the same thing. So we'll just do Highland. I did all the research. I'm not going to not do that again. So, so I'm not going to take any more amoxicillin or anything like that. Well, it's a better above the grass than below. Yes, very much so. All right, be careful going back to your cars. Be careful getting out. Yes, ma'am. That's a limestone. Most of them wash away in limestone because, unfortunately, limestone looked like it was going to hold up. But, um, once again, tombstone people didn't take chemistry class. And we're in geology class to figure out the carbonic acid, which is a component in rainwater, eats limestone. In fact, that's how you get caves. And so it does the same thing above ground that it does below ground. It eats it away. But you know, it's such a huge task with all of them. And it's a combination of even though they lock up the cemetery, it's still open in the neighborhood, and you still got people coming through. I found a new grave the other day, and I know the first, because there's no way you just accidentally hit it and come over. Um, but you constantly got people coming through, leaning on them, breaking them off. This is not vandalism. This is careless mowing. Oh. Going by the stone too close when they should come back and hit it with a weed whipper. But they don't want to take the time to do that, so yeah, this. You practically have to have a complete regiment of people going behind the mowers and the vandals to sell these stones up. And then some of them aren't worth doing. Um, some of them are, when they put some of these stones up, like this one over here with Elisha, um, or Elisha, it was probably much taller, but they didn't put a foundation under it. So the weight of it, it has sunk slowly into the earth. And there's a lot of stones missing because they're down below. I know there's a lot of them have sayings on them, and it's really sad that you can't see those anymore. Yeah, and the limestone are, some of the limestone are so gone that there's no need to even try to, yeah. try to stencil them off because it doesn't even that's how it's gone there. Thank you, Travis. Yeah, see you Thank later. Thank you, Travis. Thank you. Hi. 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 No, there's still some areas open, but most of them. Let's go.